Welcome to Real Physics. This is a series of short clips about constants of nature and today I'm talking about the Hubble constant. Why considering constants of nature at all? Because they are the royal road to fundamental physics, as I have explained in this video. Edwin Hubble became famous for his discovery of galaxies and he subsequently discovered that distant galaxies have light that is shifted to the red end of the spectrum. And uh, if you interpret the, this redshift of the light by a Doppler shift and you interpret is it as a receding velocity, then you get the idea of, of course, an expanding universe and you can divide the distance of the galaxy by the velocity and get a constant of one over time. And this is about uh, the actual uh, value is uh, 72 megaparsec, no, sorry, uh, 72 kilometers per second per megaparsec in these strange astronomical units. But it's kind of more intuitive to turn it around and look at it as a time, which is a measure of the age of the universe that corresponds to roughly 13 billion years, or even multiply it by the speed of light and you get a measure of the size of the universe. Now, the, by the way, uh, this is one interpretation. You can look at the redshift also in another way proposed by Robert Dickey in a variable speed of light context. But also in this case, the universe is not static. It has an evolution and it has probably a beginning and the Hubble constant is the inverse of the Hubble constant is again a measure of the age of the universe. The measurement of the Hubble constant has an interesting history. Hubble took, made a little error. He considered the wrong type of variable stars called cepheids. Cepheids were the appropriate tool to measure distances in, in galaxies very precisely. And so his first measurement was about two billion years for the age of the universe back then in contradiction to geological models and then uh, step by step the age of the universe increased and increased and that prompted the Russian physicist Lev Landau to the statement cosmologists are often in error but never in doubt. Still to this day this method of Cepheid distances, variable stars in distant galaxy clusters is the most precise method of determining the Hubble constant. There are other methods like analyzing the cosmic microwave background, but in my view this is a little bit like reading the tea leaves. And then you have of course the observation of distant supernovae which subsequently led also to another anomaly called dark energy. But there are good distance measurements, good distance measurements and good measurements of the Hubble constants arising from that method too. Altogether, we still have a discrepancy in today's measurements that is sometimes called the Hubble tension. From my view, it's just a sign that we don't have understood uh, cosmology very well. And I would like to stress the fundamental question why we observe this Hubble redshift at all. This is something to explain and how to relate this, call it uh, age measurement or size measurement of the universe to other length and time scales in the universe. This is a fundamental question we still have to resolve. Dirac's large numbers is one idea, but uh, well, the Hubble constant is one important constant of nature. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.